Hello and welcome to this category of videos which we've called adding video to our slideshows. My name's Barry Beckham. There's quite a lot of difference between still image slideshows and those containing video. It's the size of the video files that causes all of the issues that we may have to face. Transporting slideshows over the internet can become a little tricky due to the file sizes we may be using once we do start to add those video clips. When we use video in our slideshows it can cause us playback issues both on the computer we're making the slideshow on and also for those who may be viewing it in the future. It's always best to run a slideshow from the hard drive or the desktop rather than a disk, but that's even more important when we start to include video. We are going to need to optimize our video, probably edit the length of it as well, and maybe even affect the resolution too. Now that's all in the interests of keeping file sizes down, but also relieving that pressure on our PCs and others during playback. The good news is everything we need to do with our video can be done within Pictures to XE8. We don't need any other software at all, unless of course we particularly want to. The shooting of the video we want to use also needs some of our thought too. We don't accept camera shake within our still images and we certainly can't accept badly handheld video shots either. Unless you have an extremely steady hand, you need to find some way to steady that video. Now there's lots of ways to get around that. Use a small tripod that's easy to carry, like one of those small plastic gorilla pods. I use one of those quite often myself. Use a bean bag, but try to make sure you get the camera level. That's the trouble with the bean bag. Sometimes it's not quite level, although we could deal with that in pictures to XE. Use any street furniture to rest your camera when you shoot video and allow a few seconds at each end of the video you want to use because quite often when we start and stop the video we induce some camera shake. So leave a few seconds to trim off. What camera do we use to capture our video? Well, it doesn't really matter. We've used video from a compact camera in HD format. We've used video in HD format from a higher end digital SLR and we've also used video within these tutorials from the fabulous GoPro digital video camera. The videos we used from those three different cameras gave us no issues at all working with those within pictures to XE. Video sound is generally pretty bad, particularly with some of the cameras we may use. Wind noise, people talking close by, that can all spoil the ambient sounds we may want to use. But sometimes, as we demonstrate in the very slideshow you're looking at at the moment, the sound within the video is vital to the slideshow we're making. We want to use the sound of the car as it races around the track. Now Pictures to XE8 does not have the ability to directly edit the sound of a video yet, but there is a very neat workaround that has no disadvantages that I can see. And what it enables us to do is to edit the sound of our video completely independently to the music track or other sound files we may be using. Now if you do want to use the sound that you've recorded with the video, then the ability to edit that is virtually essential. Otherwise you can imagine any noise on the video when the video comes on screen, the sound comes on far too abruptly. In most of our projects we've taken a traditional approach, meaning that we're adding video to what is primarily a still image audio visual. But of course, Pictures to XE could be used solely with video, especially when we consider that once we've made our slideshow, 
we have the opportunity at the end to export that final file as a fully HD MP4 video or we can even write it directly to a DVD disc for playing through a domestic television. The adding of video certainly opens up creative possibilities. How much or little you wish to use, well that's going to be a creative decision for any particular author. But of course if we're careful with what we shoot, we can put our video camera on a tripod, we can shoot a few seconds of video and also take a still image from the same spot. How nice would it be to have a nice still image audio visual but from time to time the still image melts into a delicate video.